Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I am delighted to be talking with comics reader Tom Hutchison. Tom, thank you for jumping in and joining. Sure, of course, appreciate it. My pleasure, my pleasure. Folks out there will probably know you for the other part of your Zoom name there, Big Dog Inc., and I am curious by means of a first question how Big Dog Inc. came to be and how you found the world of comics. Uh, well, the world of comics has been my world for basically my entire life. Um, 70s, late 70s, you know, pop culture was booming. Star Wars and all that kind of stuff was going on. And, and I was fully involved in all of it. And, and comics was something that I didn't really know, like what a comic book was. But um, the first comic I ever bought was at a flea market uh, here in Michigan when I was a kid. Because as we're walking around the flea market, somebody had a stack of comics, and on top of it was a Godzilla comic. And I didn't know what a comic book was, but I sure knew what Godzilla was. So took that home, grabbed it, read it, and that was an immediate just, oh, my God, this is this is fantastic. How do I get more of these things? So, you know, Godzilla comics, and uh, uh, that, and that led into, you know, if you're, if you're reading a comic and you see ads for other things, Ghost Rider and whatever, Suddenly mm -hmm. I was just, you know, thrown into the world of, of this type of storytelling that I had never seen before. Um, and I was hooked. It's, it's been that way ever since. So, I mean, you know, I'm 52, basically, uh, you know, 45 of those years were have, have been involved in comics. So um, roughly about 2007 or eight ish, uh, I started to kind of get a, a hanker in of like, you know, what, what, what can I do in comics? Um, I'd been working in shops before I'd uh, been around comics forever. And I just kind of thought maybe I can make a comic. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what is it? What does it take to even do it? What is it? What does the script look like? Like, what do you do? And so I just kind of started tinkering around with it kind of then. And, and uh, originally I wanted to be an artist, but um, I realized quickly that uh, if I'm, even if I'm remotely good at drawing the characters, now I got to draw horses and trees and buildings and just like I, I'm not advancing fast enough for that. So I kind of just fell back into the writing side of it because I had created Critter um, sort of out of the blue when I was trying to be an artist. I got tired of drawing the X-Men or whatever. So I just created her uh, just for myself, because if you're drawing comics, you know, they have to look the same from panel to panel and so on. So I just used her as, as sort of my guide to kind of learn how to draw. And um so I fell back into it. I was like, well, what if I could write a story about this character that, that has no story? Like, what would it be? And I just started, again, just playing around with different ideas. Um, there was science fiction stuff to it. There was general superhero stuff to it. Um, and over time, I just sort of molded it into what I thought made sense for sort of an origin story for, for a superhero. Um, and, uh, and then I was off to the races with, just the most bizarre formats of scripts there was color coding and just i don't know what i was doing <laughs> um uh, but you know over time i i ran into people that that knew more than i did and i i would show them what i was doing and talk to them about it and they'd be like oh yeah well you know think about this and think about this and so on and so on and i was like oh my god yeah this is good so just slowly evolving to a point where i i had something coherent and then in, uh, in 2009, uh, I lost the job that I had had uh, mm -hmm. for the last eight years. And at that point, I had written, uh, Critter was underway, and I, had, I was writing another book called Penny for Your Soul. And um, I was like, you know, let me see what I can do with this before I go running to Walmart or somewhere to get another job. Let me just take a minute to focus on this and actually finish this book get the art in, like, what does this look like? Can we do anything with it? And then uh, in 2010, you know, Diamond released Penny for Your Soul in March, mm -hmm. and it was an immediate sellout. Uh, Critter then came out later in the summer, so we released both of those books in our first year in 2010. Um, and it was, we just kind of were like, I, I think this is going to work. Like, you know, we weren't blowing the doors down with sales. But, you know, in 2010, and this is what Diamond, it was funny because when I, when we got the orders for Penny for Your Soul, we had like 3,000 orders, something like that. And um, and I was kind of bummed because I was kind of hoping for five. Diamond actually came back to me. Like my rep was like, well, listen, no one knows what Big Dog Inc. is. 
No one knows who you are. No one knows who your artist is. Like no one knows anything about anything here. This is so 100% new to the retailer, to the fans and so on, that you should be really happy with a $3,000 uh, 3, uh, unit print run. And I was like, yeah, I guess that, that does kind of make sense. Um, and then when the second issue came out, we were actually releasing the books every two months at that point rather than monthly. And I did that because we wanted to make sure we were on time more mm -hmm. so than anything else. But what happened was, is because issue two was uh, available for pre-order at the exact same time that number one was on shelves and selling, the store owners were able to see that it was selling. And that kept our issue two numbers up really high. Like we had almost no attrition through the entire seven issue run. We had a little bit, but it wasn't like, because normally attrition is like, well, you sold 10,000. And then issue two is 5,000 and issue three is 3,000. And it just kind of falls off a cliff with mm -hmm. us. We never had that because every time they were ordering a new issue, the previous one was new on the racks and they could watch the sales happen and it was selling in the stores. Uh, and so we dodged the attrition. So um, that's the, that's the really long answer for your question. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was me. It was a, a friend of mine, a partner. We, we kind of founded big dog Inc. Uh, back in the day we had, uh, we had Mastiffs. And so that's our logo is, is the Mastiffs. Um, and uh, it's, it's basically just, it's sort of like IDW, right? IDW actually stands <laughs> for something. Most people don't know what that is. Um, and we've just become BDI essentially, but uh, yeah, it, it was the dogs first to get the name. And then, uh, you know, we just kind of started running with, with the books that we had myself, my books, uh, Steven Smurl was my, my partner with his Island Tales books. Um, and we just kind of dove in and it, it, it worked somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of stories are you drawn to telling in comics? Oh, I am, I am literally everywhere. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that's, I think that's some aspect of ADHD probably, um, because even though we've had, we have a few series. So Critter is a classic superhero series. Uh, Penny for your soul is a sort of a mature kind of vertigo style book about the end of days. If it were to take place in Las Vegas, uh, we have a Western reimagining the Wizard of Oz. Uh, we have a horror title with, uh, you know, were werewolves and vampires and et cetera. Uh, we have a book called Scheherazade that's just pure fantasy. So we're, I even did a historical fiction with uh, Marie Antoinette. So we're, we're <laughs> everywhere. I mean, just every, whatever, literally it's like, whatever I wake up in the morning, it's like, what do I want to do today? That's that we're going to go over there and, and, and here and there. And sometimes that, you know, I trip. I trip over that sometimes. It's like, well, I know I have to write Critter today, but I'm feeling like I want to write, you know, Kaiju Epic. And so I have to, you know, make sure I, I stay in, on track. But, um, you know, that's that's one of the the pluses to being the boss is you can you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so if I'm a listener out there and I want to find out more about the books, what would be the the social media spaces, the the web spaces that I would want to go to? Yeah, so our, our website's just bigdoginc.com. You can hop on there. You can find our back issues. Everything we have is in uh, collected editions, trade paperbacks as well. So even though we've been doing this now for 14 years, so a lot of the early issues for everything that we do is, are very hard to find, sometimes a little pricey as well. So if you just want to read the books, we've got trade paperbacks for everything, and you can just dive in and start reading them volume by volume. Um we pretty much tend to live on Facebook. So you can find mm -hmm. me on Facebook. Uh, there's a Big Dog Inc. page on Facebook. Uh, some of our individual books have their own pages as well, if you want to uh, get a little deeper there. And then Twitter and Instagram, you know, and, and TikTok, BDI Comics. Um, we just went on Blue Sky today. We're going to see what the heck that thing's going to be. Fantastic, so, fantastic. Um, you know, so uh, Big Dog Inc. on Blue Sky. So <laughs> we're kind of all over the place. Um, but Facebook kind of is our home base. Everything kind of starts there and then delineates out. Uh, we do have a Patreon as well, which, uh, if you're, if you're really interested in sort of, you know, how do we make the soup kind of stuff? Um, that's what the, the Patreon's for. You get to watch kind of everything get made from sort of concept and logos, to designs to, to, you know, the layouts and the pencils and the inks and the colors. And you kind of get to watch everything get made ahead of time. Um, and there's other bonuses as well for being for being a, a regular Patreon member as well. But um, as far as the content goes, it's it's really good for creators, especially if you if you like to see how it's made and sort of get ideas. But also if you're just a fan and you want to be the first one to see it all, uh, you know, that's that's good for that, too. 
Fantastic, fantastic. Well, um, by means of a, a final official question, I tend to ask about collaborations and people that you'd like to spotlight that are part of the creation process. So any particular folks that you'd like to shout out? Well, we've worked with a lot of people over the years, and a few of them have stuck with us from the beginning, basically. Uh, Nii Rufino has been with us since, since year one, essentially, uh, on Colors. Um, and then we actually published her first ever cover. And nice, um, nice. From, from that time on, she's worked with us eternally. Uh, she has done every, she's done a cover for every book for our Legend of Oz series. Um, she's, she's fantastic. She's working on something right now for our Iron Butterfly book that will be launching February 29th. Um, CB Zane is another one that's been around with us for, for a long time. We've been 14 years. I think we've had 12 years of CB. Um, he's a, he's a regular nice. partner of ours for covers. Um, but we also have done a lot of work together specifically. We do a, an annual book called goth day together where we take all of our characters mm -hmm. from their various worlds and sort of twist them up a little bit into their sort of goth alternatives. Uh, and he does all the interiors for that book. So we've been doing that for three years. He's back on it again this year. Um, so, you know, guys like that, uh, you can't find enough of those people. And, and when you do find them, you got to really latch onto them and, and, you know, let them know how much uh, value they have to, to what you're doing. Um, but I mean, there's, there's endless cover artists that we've worked with for, for years and years and years. A lot of new folks have come in. Narsley Osusa has been doing amazing work for us. Um, Man, at the you put me right on the spot. Jason Hay here is a guy <laughs> that uh, kind of came out of nowhere, um, and uh, uh, he was kind of just pitching himself. and And I had him do a couple of little small projects, uh, and that I thought he had kind of a nice style to for kind of a little bit of a cartoony style. and uh, And then one day he he came in and he just sent me a piece that he was doing for Ursa Minor just on his own. I didn't tell him to do it, uh, and, uh, and I was looking. I was like, wow, that's it's like really good. We should make that a pinup for the book. Uh, and he says, sure, let, let me finish it up. And then he sends another sort of round on it. And I was like, wow, that's really coming together. Like the details are really, really good. Maybe we'll make that a cover. He was like, oh, great. So then he finishes the piece. All of a sudden it's got massive backgrounds. And it's just, it's like, what just happened here? Like, this is an amazing piece. And he's become a regular cover artist now for us, as well as doing the interiors for, for many years. So um, you know, we're always looking for people and, uh, uh, anybody wants to send us their, their links to their samples. I'm, I'm wide open to, to seeing what you've got. Um, but you know, we, we do have sort of those starters, uh, for big dog ink that you, you've got to knock off from time to time. Oh, well, fantastic, Tom. I appreciate the time. I appreciate you coming on and glad to have you back anytime. Glad to spotlight creators along the way as well. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.